guys, Bob Gar here, and I wanted to record a non ten dollar deck for fun. This is a deck I was been brewing up. Um, so basically, there's an interaction in Tooth and Nail where you you Tooth and Nail for Xenagos, God of Revels, and Emrakul the Aeon's Torn, and you put them both into play, and then Emrakul can swing for thirty thirty with haste on the turn you do that. And that costs nine mana. I think that was really expensive, but uh, Indomitable Creativity. If we can pull it off, if it doesn't get disrupted allows us to do the same combo with only five mana and I wanted to see if I could make this work in modern and this is the deck that I brewed up it has some advantages it has some disadvantages from the kind of tooth and nail list uh, the big disadvantage is we're not allowed to run in any creatures and if we get these guys stuck in our hand we're in a little bit of trouble but we do have a couple ways to deal with that one way of dealing with them getting stuck in our hand is if we have Emrakul stuck in our hand or both of them stuck in our hand we can faithless looting them away and Emrakul will shuffle them back into our deck for us so that we can indomitable creativity and get them um, faithless looting also just helps us draw to our indomitable creativity we only have four so we're just not going to have them every game so this is both acts as a one drop and a three drop to kind of dig us towards the creativity. Uh, we want a little bit of ramp because we need to get up to five mana to pull off the combo. I can't run creature ramp and I can't run artifact ramp. And so I have to run land ramp and so Utopia's Ball is what I went with. It's a little hard because my mana base, as you'll see over here, is not super good. Cinder Glades are the only non-basic I'm running. That's just because I don't own that many red-green non-basics. If I could, I would run fetches and shocks uh, in, in the appropriate colors, but I don't have that option, unfortunately. Uh, so those are our one drops. Our two drops, I'm running a Desperate Ritual. I mean, this this deck feels to me like it really wants a Simeon Spirit Guide so that you can Indomitable Creativity at X at least two a turn early, but uh, that's a creature, so it would get it by Indomitable Creativity and come into play. So we can't use that, so I'm running Desperate Ritual instead just as a way to uh, up our mana count by one, and not only does it up our mana count by one, it also potentially shifts green mana into red mana, which is potentially important because this requires three red. So this is another one that's, I, I, there might be better options if I wasn't on such a budget build, but given the build I have, this is this is the way I went. Um, then we need targets for this, so we're, we're going to run a creature token package. Dragon Fodder and Krinko's Command are basically the same card. Uh, they produce two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens at sorcery speed. Uh, we then have Hordling Outburst, which is pretty much the same thing. It produces three, costs one additional mana. And then uh, the final thing we're running in the deck is, well, I guess we're running Harmonizes to, again, help us, similar to Faithless Looting, just help us draw to our Indomitable Creativity and anything else we might need. Then we're running a bunch of Planeswalkers. So I decided to run Planeswalkers that both ramped us. Uh, which is pretty important because we need to get to 5 mana, although admittedly they're at four, 4 already. So it's not super important, but um, a lot of times we'll want to cast this for 6 just in case they have a removal spell on one of the creatures we're attempting to sack to it. Or destroy with it. Because I, I believe if they kill it in response, you don't get to search on that one. So uh, a lot of times we'll like to Hordling Outburst or run 2 of these or put out one of these guys and get out an additional creature with them. And, and if we want to get to 6 mana. Um, so yeah, uh, both of them have land ramp and both of them have token creation. So this guy, uh, Garrick Wildspeaker, creates three threes and untaps lands. Xenagos the Reveler gets this mana equal to the number of creatures we control, which will usually be at least two or three because we're going to have these token makers and he can also make a two two himself. So that's, that's the idea of the deck. Um, I played one match with it and won, but it was not against a super top tier deck. I uh, goldfished with it a little bit and it seemed to combo off turn 4 or 5 usually, but like I said, you can get into awkward states where you end up with these guys in your hand you can end up in awkward states where you just don't draw your indomitable creativity, so I don't anticipate it being super reliable but it is spicy and fun and there's nothing quite as satisfying as swinging in with a 30-30 trample annihilator haste on turn 4, so let's play some games to see how it goes Oh, and I didn't talk about the sideboard, but the sideboard's pretty typical. It's, you know, Ancient Grudge, because in red-green that's pretty powerful. Um, I had to run Pajuka Bogs, because all the other uh, graveyard hate that I have is artifact-based, and we didn't want artifacts because those get hit by Indomitable Creativity. Um, some Lightning Bolts, uh, some Natural States, some uh, Ghost Quarters, the, the, kind of the typical stuff, mostly. Hello, good luck. I'm against M14. 
All right, so we have ramp and we have a lot of creature tokens with nothing else. This is a pretty bad hand, but we do have the mana we need. We just, I don't know if six creature tokens is gonna do it. So I think I am gonna mulligan this. I think this is better. Um, I think I'll keep the fourth land just so I can get to harmonize and Garrick Wildspeaker for sure. Uh, it's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's it's fine. I'll, just, I'll play Forest turn one, not that it really matters. Not in turn two. I, maybe I should have played Mountain Bruce, but like I said, I don't think it really matters. He's not doing much yet. Got a second copy of Garrick. Well, there's worse things I could have. Okay, put out a couple Goblin tokens. He could kill them, but if he does, I'm, I'm mostly okay with that. It's a little sad they don't have a play next turn. I'm very much wondering what deck he's playing. Snow-covered mountain, sure. He just passes, alright. Pyretic Ritual, it gives me the option of playing uh, Garrick now if I want to. Um, might as well play Cinderglade. Or I could even play Harmonize if I really wanted to. I don't think that's the right move, though. He takes it. Well, I doubt he has a counter spell, and I don't think... I think I'm going to have enough mana. Actually, can I do it? No, because I'm going to be out of green, right? So I can get three red, but I don't have enough green to play either of them. So I can't I can't even use the Pyretic Ritual, unfortunately. So I guess I just pass here. That was silly of me. I don't know why I thought I could use it. He plays... Colgan's Command. Sure, making me discard a card. Oh yeah, we'll discard the Disper Ritual. That seems fine. I reach Sanitarium. Interesting. What does he have here? Each player draws a card, then discards a card. Sure. Is that what he's doing? No. He's actually playing something. Okay. He takes my Harmonize, because that's all I can take. Sure. And I have the Creativity now, which I could use to go off next turn if it doesn't look like he can stop me. I certainly Garrick here. I think I minus the Garrick and put out a token. There's some question of whether I want to Indominal Creativity if he leaves a bunch of lands up just because he could have removal spells at instant speed. I think I won't. I think I'll just play down and then it goes to the Reveler. Alright. Um, can only get to three right now. I would need four to do anything different. So I think I, I may have another one of these anyway. I think I'll just create another token. I'll create token here. Swing on in. And then next turn I feel pretty comfortable, especially if he doesn't remove anything, I can do it for quite a bit of mana. So I guess I could also just potentially like kill him next turn. Sure. Discard a card, I'll discard a mountain. I'm a little worried he's a combo deck too, but I don't know. I don't know exactly what he's doing. Oh, he has... Got it. He, he has that guy, which is pretty scary. Well, he's had a lot of mana. Six mana. Well, tapping out is a good sign for me. Sure, Chandra's fine. Yeah, then I, I, I win the game here, I think. No, no, she's going to minus three. I guess I don't technically win the game. I can kill the Chandra, put in another beast token, and play another Garrick. Is that what I do? Sure. Uh, it slows me down, I guess, actually. So it's a little annoying. Passes. Uh, one. Um. So, yeah. So my other option is, I don't have enough to, I can Indomitable Creativity X1, I guess I could Indomitable, no I can, I can only do it X1, right, so I could, I could create two tokens, do it X1, and kill the Chandra, but I don't think that's worth it. I think I need to um, create a 2-2, two -two. paste, create a 3-3, three -three. and play down 
another Garrick. And I mean, I think I create, do I create another 3-3? That's the question. I mean, I guess you could put out another Chandra and wipe him. I think it feels safer to put out another 3-3. Attack Chandra, right? The other option was to untap two lanes and cast nothing, which makes him bigger, which is nice, but doesn't do much other than that. Does he have like a second Chandra? That would be pretty annoying. Just tap him carefully. Collective Brutality would be pretty mean. Okay, that's actually fine. That doesn't bother me at all. Doubt he can. I doubt he has something that will instant speed kill multiple things. I think I'll Utopia Sprawl for the heck of it. On red. Uh, let's tap this for. I guess can I play Xenagos here? I probably can, right? One, two, three. Tap two lands. Two. Well, let's count how much mana I have and how much mana I'll get from playing him. One, two. So I have six now, which is what I wanted. If I play him, I guess I would only have five then. You know, I think I'll just do this. Took me till turn seven. <laughs> yeah, he said. See, he said did not expect that, <laughs> and so I said, "Yeah, I'm experimenting. Uh, don't quite have the cards to make it work, but uh, five mana tooth and nail instead of a nine mana tooth and nail seemed pretty good." <laughs> um, now we know what he is a little bit. But I still don't super know what he is. He has... I, th I think Lightning Bolt could be worth it against him. Um, what would I want to take out, though? I could go down some Desperate Rituals for some Lightning Bolts. I just know he has Planeswalkers, which feel worth removing. Um, I don't want to go down too many Token Makers. I could go down... Let's go down a single... Dragon fodder or something. Two desperate rituals. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Don't think I want any of these other things. Ancient grudge. Do you do you run many artifacts? I can't even remember. I don't think you ran any that were very significant. Well, let's let's just try it again. I definitely think I took him by surprise a little bit. <laughs> Alright, what what do I got here? He seems he seems friendly, which is good. He called me mate, which I assume either means he's like British or just joking around, I don't know, one of the two. Oh, uh, I think I gotta keep this. I got a pretty good set of stuff. Unfortunately, well I might draw a basic plane a basic basic plane, basic forest, and then I feel good. If I don't draw basic forest, I'm a little slow, but I mean, I don't think you can mulligan this hand. I also need to draw one more land, but one more land's not hard to draw. I mean, technically, I could like turn three Indomitable Creativity X1 or something if I draw well. He faithless lootings. Oh god, what is his deck then? Oh, that's right, he's playing uh, Demigod of Revenge. I remember now. I remember. Well, I'm gonna play Cinderglade because I don't have a turn one play and I'd like it to be untapped next turn. I probably Utopia Sprawl next turn. Unfortunately, I have to Utopia Sprawl with Cinderglade onto Cinderglade, so I don't get to do that. And Krinko's Command, which feels bad. Oh my god, I'm Krinko flooded. Uh, well, hopefully I draw a land next turn. Oh 
man, I, I think I gotta go... I, I think red is still correct here. Faithless looting. Well, he's got two demigods in his graveyard. I'm guessing that means he has one in his hand, which means things could easily go sideways. Um, so I think, given that I drew that, I think I gotta go Xenagos into 2-2 two -two swing. If I draw one more land or a... Well, let's see what he does here. Lightning Bolt on Xenagos, sure. That does suck for me, because now I'm short on green to play this. So now my... Um, now it's definitely the case that... Uh, I probably should Utopia Sprawl on green here. Doesn't feel great, but I can do that and then also fire off a Pinko's Command. Green. Goes command. Attack. Okay. He has terminate, sure. I can also now play out Garrick, and then also Indominal Creativity X2, which he might be able to disrupt if he has like Lightning Bolt, which he might try to keep in hand right here. It's hard for me to imagine him keeping two such spells. Or I could wait a turn. I'm not sure which one's better. Passes. If I get a land, I think I can do it all. Draw land. Nope. Um. One, two, three, four. Garrick Wild Speaker. Tap two lands. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Do I play all of those? I think I might. It does depend though. One, two, three, four, five. If he gets to six and has a Chandra, which he probably does, I'm a little. Not screwed, but it's a little hard, right? Hmm. So, but I don't think I can go off when he has that much mana open. I don't. I given the how much looting he's done, I don't trust him not to have an instant speed. Um, let's just do, let's just do a Hordling Outburst. Pass turn. I feel like whatever he plays has to be most of his mana. Gee, thanks. I had the Indomitable Creativity too, I just didn't play it. Um, Oh, interesting. He could have slaughtered games to there. I'm actually surprised he didn't slaughter games. But I guess it didn't matter because I could minus and swing for one, two, three. So these would all be four fours, and that would just obliterate him. So there was no there was no good solution for him there. All right, well, sweet, got there. The brew the brew worked this game. I played against this slightly janky demigod of uh, revenge brew, but. You know, it's. I think it's a very powerful deck. I think it's a lot of fun. I don't know if it's good, but yeah, I wanted to show you the deck. Feel free to try it and upgrade it, and I'm pretty sure you could build it a lot better, but I, I think it's a neat idea. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. If you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash magicgatheringstrategy.